Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about shows of supernatural, fantasy, and or science fiction on genre. For today's episode, I'm talking about the latest episode of Killjoys, as well as the latest episode of Dark Matter. Start off with Killjoys. So, a very good and bad aspects to every, you know, running down the episodes. It looks like kind of, with everything being it, what it is, it seems like everything just came out a little worse. First of all, I will admit, I like the way, I really like when episodes kind of like show you like, oh, this is the aftermath first, then let's show you how we got to there. You know, the whole like Dutch being captured and it's like, oh, you helped Joke, um, Joko get away. Like, you know, expl you know, not really explain anything because she knows like, I mean, she eventually told the guy the truth and he thought she was lying, but she's like, yeah, you pumped me full of that truth serum crap. I know I'm not bleeding on my mouth, so obviously I'm telling the truth because it's like she had told them the truth. They wouldn't have believed her. So, I mean, the whole situation was just crappy. We kind of see the team kind of coming back together after they rescue Potter and Johnny. Uh, you know, it kind of brings up the question of, like, why Dutch is so mad. Dut, um, Dav is more willing to forgive, but it's kind of, he's kind of like, you know, yeah, Dutch is jealous. And, um, Johnny's like, but Dutch is Dutch. When have you ever known Dutch to be jealous? He's like, yeah, that is interesting. Like, that's kind of weird. Like, you should ask her what it is. He ended up finding out what the answer was with, um, it was, uh, I th it's kind of surprising, and it kind of at the same time makes sense. Basically, she is who she is, like, on the inside, um... Person Klein made her to be this quote unquote monster that exists within her. But Johnny's help put that person away and made Dutch who she is now. Like, so Johnny is always kind of like that beacon of hope, that beacon of light for her to kind of keep the darkness at bay in a metaphorical sense and well, more so in a literal sense in some cases. But, you know, she felt like Potter was taking that away from her. Because it also seemed like Potter was kind of getting to know Johnny a little bit more than her. Because it came down to the conversation. Because, you know, Potter and Dutch kind of bumped heads about it. Specifically, like, Dutch did. Because Potter was trying to explain, just like, I'm sorry that Johnny lied to you. At the end of the day, it was his choice. I asked him to get involved, but I didn't want him to get hurt. But it's like, oh, Johnny kind of got hurt and he lied to me. And, like, I said, you know, I understand why she's so upset about Johnny simply lying to her. But for Potter, she's like, you know, it wasn't my choice. It was his choice. You know, he chose a side. And, and um, that's just like, but we're killjoys. We don't choose a side. She's like, Johnny does. Like, he doesn't, you know, he wants to be more than a killjoy. She's like, how do you know? It's like, because he told me. Which you kind of see like a shocked look on her face. Because that's something that Johnny's never expressed to her before. You know, the Dutch. It's just like, to her, in her mind, she's like, oh, we've all... We love, we've been Killjoys for such a long time. We love working together. Like, we love our jobs as Killjoys. But it's like, for him, he's a guy that cares and is kind of, you know, tired of always sitting on the sidelines. Because as as a Killjoy, you're not supposed to have side, choose sides. You're not supposed to have allegiance. Alle the only allegiance you have is to the warrant. That's all that matters. That's their motto, basically. So, I guess it came to a shock to her that it's like, out of anybody, like, that Johnny wouldn't tell her something like that. But I guess it's also because it's like, well, she, he knows how much being a killjoy matters to her because it means being less herself and basically being someone someone else, essentially, like being the Dutch she is. So maybe he was super reluctant to bring that up because he didn't want to kind of take that away from her. Or maybe it's just something he's thought about, but he's never thought about a lot. You know, it's just kind of, oh, he had fun. He's had fun, like, being with Dutch, it's a big part of his life. He enjoys it and loves the work they do because it's a fun adventure. But maybe there's always been a part of his brain that thought about more. But it wasn't until Potter came into his life that he thought about it even more. So Then we had Delsea being a part of all this. It's just one thing after another. It's just like I can't. She just, she can never remove herself from like asshole territory you know what i mean like she's always so evil always manipulating plotting it's like you you kind of hope it's like okay at the very least you know in klein's case it seems like whatever evil he does it seems like there might be a greater purpose to it in her case it seems like all she cares about is power because you know you have potter trying to plead with her please help like old town you're 
you know, I'll give you anything. She's like, basically, you know, Potter, like she basically turned Potter down. Just like, you're sentimental. You've always been like that. She says, like, basically, I grew up, you know, because she was kind of like, what happened? She's like, I grew up, unlike you, essentially, saying, like, basically that Potter list was, is so idealistic, where it's like, I guess in Delcea's case, she feels like she's being practical and being real realistic. Like, the only thing that happens in the world is by you making it happen with, by amassing a large amount of power. And it's just kind of like, what she was making it sound like was that, like, the company was going to be like, okay, yeah, have everyone think it's like a sickness going around. And then it's like, oh, here swoops in the company to cure you all, take you away and help quarantine the area. And it's like, oh, we're here helping you you know, from this plague that's spreading, even though they're the ones spreading it with the food, uh, not really a plague, but individually killing people, I mean, it's meant to kill the old and the weak, like they brought up last episode, it's kind of brought, like it's, like hammered in this episode, especially because you actually see people dropping dead, left and right throughout, uh, West, well, Old Town specifically. I guess the whole point, because like the analogy she, she used was the fact is that people would rather stay blind than see the truth. So essentially, people wouldn't be looking for answers. They'd just be like, oh, here's the great and wonderful people who came to save us. The, the company is amazing. Now we'll be 100% loyally dedicated to them. I mean, more so the wall helped push that along too. But I think a combination of that plus the wall would make them just internally in service to the company because it's like oh it doesn't matter how this all happened what matters is that they were there in our time of need type of situation and we ended up finding out what exactly they were trying to do this entire time like weeding out the weak and leaving on it strong it's because they're trying to make sixes for what purpose we still don't know like it's like we still don't even know a, have a clear picture of how far this goes up like is Delcea the only member of the nine involved or are there plenty of I feel like there's got to be plenty of others because I feel like she wouldn't act on her own even as powerful as she is she's still not powerful enough to make the moves needed to be made for all this to happen so kind of want to change things up a little bit because it's like you know before I get into the even more like heavier stuff of the episode to me some of my favorite aspects of it is like for one, the whole, like, Davin saying, like, oh, yeah, like, he's there making jokes. He's like, see, this is what happens when you run solo. You can't be badass and the funny guy at the same time. It just doesn't work like that. And even when he was, uh, Johnny was having that whole conversation with that computer, which, to me, that computer, I really liked that computer system, the one that was running the wall. I really liked it because it was like, hey, it's snarky, like Lucy a little bit. Even, they even I really liked that it ended up leading to them actually talking to, like, obviously, Lucy was trying to hack into him and whatnot. Just like, oh, like, look at you. You're all exposed. And then the computer's like, no, don't say something like that. That's so essentially crude or whatever and then because basically Johnny was pissed at the machine because he's like oh man the way this thing is talking to me is like oh you're an idiot oh you're not willing to give up mm, well go ahead and continue to try and stuff like that just making asshole comments and just Johnny's like oh whoever made this thing is such an asshole and then dad walks up and says yeah yeah but don't worry my asshole is bigger than his asshole or whatever Basically, and then just kind of like, you see Johnny kind of like, wait, what? what? What the hell is that? What are you saying? And he's like trying to be like, no, you're my asshole and he's an asshole. You're, my, you're being my asshole. You're, you know, it's just kind of walked away from it. That was just great. And then, you know, kind of one of the biggest lighthearted moments of the episode. But it also, that as well as like the fact is that Johnny was like having that conversation with Dutch. Because, um... Basically, I'll get to it in a minute, but after Potter did what she did in this episode, uh, Johnny was like, you know, like, he want, he wants peace. He wants he wants to have his Dutch and eat his Potter, too, which led to a little laugh between him and Dutch. It's just, oh, the, the innuendos that this show has. That's just, that was amazing. But, you know, letting, letting that slip by real quickly and just going to about, about what Potter did, it's kind of like... you. You don't, whether it's right or wrong, I mean, granted, yes, it was wrong, but it's for the right reasons. Basically, sacrificing all those people, because I was wondering how those people ended up dead. I was like, oh, were they all poisoned? It's like, no, they were technically killed by Potter. She activated the machine, made them all super pissed, and then turned the, the wall back on and made them, like, 
it fueled the fire so it makes it so they slam into the wall. They kept slamming into the wall until they finally made it kind of, the system kind of overload. We didn't really get to see it. We only saw one part of the wall being attacked. So what I like to assume and like to think is that basically all around Old Town, across the different part, parts of the wall, people were throwing their bodies into it. And just the amount of energy it had to use to bounce all those people back. And it was all happening simultaneously. I'm sure that's what helped kind of take the wall down. Like we saw one side of it, but I feel like that wouldn't be enough to kind of overload the wall because even at the beginning like when you see all those bodies laying down like not knowing the context of it it's like we, i feel like you didn't get to see everybody body you saw the ones in front of that particular wall but not everybody because i feel like it had to be like a like a, all around old town something like that happening so there's no telling just how many people really died and the potter's like you know she has to live with that because it's like yes she did it for the right reasons but that was still a lot of people she killed and it even led to like I said, Johnny's second guessing her is just like, oh, she killed all those people. Like, we could have found another way, but for for Potter, it needed to be done because basically them sacrificing themselves and tearing down a wall would basically send a message to all the other towns on Westerly that, you know, do not back down. Like, you want things to change, you, you want to make it so they don't try to poison you and control you, then make a stand. Do not falter here. Which then led to the whole thing with Del Sea. It just kind of like, to me, that was kind of a crappy deal. It's basically like Del Sea out of out a, as a means of punishing her. It's like, okay, we'll give Westerly its independence. We'll walk away. Which at that point in time, I should have known something else. Because like, you're giving up way too easy. You don't give up. And it's just, I was like, maybe she's just willing to compromise. Like, I don't know what I really thought was going to happen in the end. Like, I, you know, when it was all said, I was like, okay, the fact of the matter is she loses her position and stuff like that. I was like, it could be worse. I mean, granted, after everything she sacrificed and worked so hard for just to lose it all like that and being, you know, the last one, well, not really the last of her family, which that's, I just was not expecting Del Sayer to kill her like that. I mean, I kind of was thinking like maybe like someone else were trying to kill her or whatever, but I didn't expect they'll say to outright kill her herself. And it just like the moment that happened, I was I couldn't help but scream out my TV. I was like, "You bitch, fuck you!" Legitimately, my words verbatim. And oh my god, that just it that just sucked, dude. I knew it was gonna come. Like I knew it was happening. Cause what did I say like last episode? She said, I am so in love with you, Jacoby, I could die. I was like, oh, don't say that. I knew it was some heavy-ass foreshadowing. I was hoping it wasn't going to go down like that. Because I knew something was up during that whole deal. The way Del Sayo was just sitting there. I was just like, wait, okay, something's about to happen. I don't know what it is. And she just stabs her. And I'm just like, that's so heartbreaking. Especially after, you know, her and Johnny were going to basically complain about her future. She's like, well... I was going to think I was going to ma marry a uh, Cresci, you know, live on a Cresci uh, real estate, you know, basically live the high class life with someone who's a powerful member of the nine. But it's like, you know, you can just live on a ship. I mean, they're just making out and everything. It's, just, it's so sweet. Like they were trying to push back everything and stay with each other because they legitimately loved each other, had strong feelings for each other. But it's like they'll say I had to screw that over. So that really really sucks especially on the fact of the matter is that means well i mean it makes you wonder what does that also mean about potter's sister does she have any claim to uh running the family as a the leader of the ninth or is that something that was just kind of like taken off the board after they like because she remember she swapped out a contract and she put um Potter's blood on it to kind of signify it. So it's kind of like maybe that was her selling the rights to like her family as a knight and their powers. And it's just, it's just a damn shame. Cause, you know, it, like in her sister's case, literally lost her parent, both her parents not too long ago. And now she's lost her sister too. And it's just, it's just the worst situation that, and you have whatever Dale say is planning is being like, okay, yes. We are coming together. We're no longer separated. You know, the people kind of got that just like evil smile on her face. It's just like, what is she up to? Maybe we'll find out next episode. I mean, because it seems like Klein is possibly willing to explain everything because he finally is like, is like, Fancy shows up and basically he tortured Jelko. It's just kind of like, I wish Jelko had died. I do wish, um, 
Dutch had killed him, but it's like they needed him. But I'm sure they were going to go there and beat the smack out of him. It looks like Fancy kind of tortured him a little bit. So it makes you a little bit feel a little bit better. But it's just like you still would feel so much more better. Like you would feel much better if he was dead. Because it's, you know what that means to me? That means he's still alive and it means he's going to be a hindrance. It means he's going to pop up again. And just like I don't want that bastard to kind of pop up because he's a, he played such a big role in all this happening. I mean, also, you know what? She kind of threw it in her face, but the whole, like, Potter killing her friend, the one that was trying to help her figure out what this whole thing was like last episode. The one who played, the actor who, is the actor who played uh, Dolls from One on Earth, him, like, she threw that in her face this episode, but it's like, will that come up a little bit later on? It's like, trying to, like, paint Potter as, like, a bad person. It's like, oh, this is actually what Potter did. Well, granted... I think that's what kind of gave Delcea kind of sway over the other higher ups because it's kind of like, oh, here's video of you doing that. You kill. Well, no, because if that was the case, I feel like Potter would have been in a lot more deep water before then. But I don't know, man. It just outright sucks. And I just, it's very sad and just. You wanted everything to work out, but like I said, I already knew it. The moment she said that, I could I could die. It's like oh, the moment she said, I was like, don't say that. I was like, now they're they're heavily foreshadowing, and what happens? She's dead now. I hope on everything. I was kind of like, no, 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 she's not dead. Actually, she's alive, and they were able to treat her in time. Delcea being twisted like she is, she actually took uh her somewhere to get you know. Recover because it's like, oh, I want her to stay alive so I can glow it in her face because I actually won this time, you know? It just, it just sucks. And now moving on to this week's episode of Dark Matter. A very interesting episode where we have two's... We finally find out what's wrong with two is basically the nanites inside of her are flawed. And that basically the guys that made her at, what was it, uh, Dwarf Star Corporation ended up finding out. It's like, oh yeah. Actually, they're flawed, and over time, they're going to slowly degrade, and that's what has been happening to her this entire time. So it's like, hey, the only solution is for us to go to Earth, or as how they already refer to it as, was it, Terra Prime? Uh, it's very interesting seeing Earth in this episode. Granted, we didn't see too much of it. We saw a little bit of it, but obviously, you know, it's futuristic and stuff like that. So the only way is to, you know, sneak into there and find out you know because they obviously got some kind of solution so they have to basically break in to uh dwarf star to get whatever they need to repair two and basically two wanted to kind of handle this on her own but the team wouldn't let her because they care too much about it because they are dysfunctional as they may be and you know crazy you know coming from the different backgrounds and situations that they come from they're still a family nonetheless and so they're willing to fight for it, which two admires that she's okay with that, but she doesn't want a situation being more like they die for her or something like that. You know, it's because like she's like basically because that's why she has the android charge her um, nanites. It's like oh, you'll only have like twenty four hours because after that they'll completely drain out and you'll die. So it's just kind of a short relief. And essentially, you know, for her, it's just like I'd rather die fighting back than dying very slowly, you know, and just sitting here doing nothing, twiddling my thumbs while everyone else risked their lives for me, you know, it's like, they risked their lives for me, it's only fair that I put myself out there to, you know, fight al alongside them, essentially. And what I really liked about that situation, well, not liked about it, but the situation was, like, you had five being super worried about it, she's up there drinking hot chocolate, and then you have... The android coming over and she's like, oh, like I have like, was it, was it 20,000 or 20 million, something like that, taste uh, receptors in her mouth. And she drinks the hot chocolate and it's like, mmm, it's good. And Fi's about to get it again and then she just keeps drinking it and eventually she even walked away with it. I guess like in her mind, obviously she was super worried about it, so I'm assuming like she took it away from Five so Five wouldn't worry too much. It's like, you know, it's just, I guess the hot chocolate would be more of a kind of like, oh, like, you know, drinking it might calming her nerve. Well, really, I, I think the android took it specifically to calm her own nerves, you know, just she pretended like she wasn't nervous and scared, but she was. She was just as nervous and scared as Five was. Almost like, like, I'm kind of like the, um... 
less uh, kind of laid back point in the episode is we ended up finding out that, I mean, well, not finding out, we saw Four and Nick's kind of hooked up, and they're just like, hey, let's just keep this sexual, and Four is like, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we were kind of got this straight, that it could never be anything more, and she's like, I got it, I got it, let's just drop it, and then when they went to go get some food, Five and Three are sitting there, and like, they're eating, and then like three's like, oh, I heard you guys going at it all night. They're like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, you guys are training. They're like, yeah, bow sticks and swords and stuff. And he looks around. And he's just like, oh, did you get to some grappling too? And then five following got it. She's like, oh, I'm just gonna finish up eating. I'm just gonna walk away. And just he's so smug about it and whatnot. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. I ne I don't, never would have thought it would have led to that. Interestingly enough, I would have thought maybe three and Nick's. But I guess, you know, her and Four spent a lot of time together, so I guess that makes sense. But it's just like, you know, after that whole, like, finding out Nick's can or gun thing, I'm surprised uh, Three didn't just act upon that. Just like, wow, just marry me right now type of situation, you know? We ended up meeting that guy named Eric, who uh, was very interesting learning a little bit more about Two's past in the sense of, like, uh, basically she was kind of a blank slate. That basically they did whatever they wanted to to her. They'd basically push her body more and more just to see what kind of situations, like how good the nanites were working, recovering her, like what kind of extreme situations her body could survive in. And just with every test she passed, they just escalated it more and more and more just to see what she was really capable of. And you had Eric being the only person that was very compassionate towards her. He fed her. He was good to her. Um... He even was the one to help teach her things. Like, you know, like I said, she was kind of like a blank slate. She didn't know anything. So until, like, they sat her down, kind of absorbed. She kind of, I guess, in a sense, almost took classes to kind of learn basic stuff and everything. But sadly, they didn't realize how exceptional she would be. Yeah, basically, all that knowledge she would take and her hatred for all the things they did to her, that she would basically go on a killing spree. She basically killed everyone in the facility except for Eric just because he was a nice guy. And so they helped use him to kind of break in. Sadly, he ended up dying because of, um, I don't remember his name, uh, is it Rock? Uh, Will Wheaton's character. And it's just like, ah, oh, it's like the moment he was just like, because I love the fact that three and uh, six try to be like okay with him, try to be like, no, 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 no. We coerced him, like, it wasn't his fault. He acted out of, you know, because we threatened his life. And he's like, and then he's like, Will Wheaton's like, oh, really? They threatened you? He's like, oh, then it's okay. Go ahead, take him out. And, Leaves the room, pow, you hear the gunshot. It's just like, oh, you bastard. It's just like, you suck. And then you ended up also uh, finding out about that whole thing. About, we still don't know what it was, but the th whatever it was that he put inside of three, it looked like it could have been like, it looked like it had a like um, tentacle like a squid or an octopus. I'm thinking some kind of artificially created parasite or whatever, because whatever it did to Free, basically, because from what the android was saying, it was almost like he was unconscious, even when his body was active, because it was basically that thing controlling his body. It's like his mind was put into kind of like an unconscious state, and then like his body was kind of reacting by the thing inside of him. Now, when it came out of him, I don't know whether that was because it was like, oh, it couldn't handle the code, or was it because... It just is like, oh, it knows that Three's body was being trapped, so it just wanted and out. I kind of, I mean, it seems like they got all of it, all of it came out of him, so it doesn't seem like there's any residue left to kind of screw him over or screw over the Raza in any shape or form. But it's still wondering, like, what the hell is that thing, like, you know? And the fact that matters we're being introduced to that makes me think we're going to be seeing it at some point in the future. Same thing as that other android, the more advanced, and um, not android god, the, um, uh, the new and improved, basically, too. Like, basically, Will Wheaton's character made another version with the new enhanced nanites, who's stronger, faster, just overall better than two. So, four took him down. He's like, I like to see him heal from this, but I'm pretty sure he is going to. It's probably going to take a while, but I'm, I, I doubt they took that thing down permanently. I'm sure it's going to rear its ugly head at some point in the future, so... The fact of the matter is we never really found out whatever happened to those other guys that worked with Eric uh, who helped uh, to uh, help them kind of get into the facility and find out where the um, nanites were hidden and stuff like that. Like what happened, like it makes you wonder like will Will Wheaton's character find out they helped him out and get killed as well? 
you know, or what will happen when they find out about Eric? Will the company guy spin it? Be like, oh yeah, it was the uh, people in Raza that killed him. So they're go are they going to think it was two that killed Eric? Or are they going to know the truth of like, oh crap, like he, Eric was killed by Star Dwarf Corporation? So I just something that's kind of rolling through the back of my mind makes you wonder: Will we see them again or not? Or is it just kind of one off? characters i feel like you know i feel like they're not because they know that they look at two now at well, rebecca and they look at her like oh she's actually a good person she could have killed us but she didn't especially when she was asking for the retinas and you're like oh crap she's basically thinking like oh crap she's gonna rip her eyes out it's like oh no she's just gonna scan her eyes and copy them onto uh six and three which is very interesting that we ended up still seeing that, like, to a certain degree. It's like every episode, he still keeps it up. The fact is, he's very reluctant to trust uh, Six again. Kind of keeping him on the leash, being like, okay, you stay here on the ship of Four. Which Four is like, you didn't think it'd actually be this. He's like, yeah, I didn't, but still. But Four actually, it led to an interesting conversation with Four, where Four was like, yeah, I understand. Do you know, your split loyalty, because, like, mine is split between this crew and my people. I, my, my world is at war right now, and I, I would be better off being there than here just, you know, idle, like, idly living day to day on this ship, you know, I have better things to do, but he's like, you know, I stay because, you know, out of obligation and loyalty to everyone in his crew because they're like his friends, so he would never just upright abandon them. That's kind of something that's because it, it was kind of brought up by the preview, the other dimensions, uh, two and three of like what's holding him back in this dimension, and that and that was what was holding uh, four back in this dimension, and not the other one. It's the fact that he cares about these people, and he he feels obligated to stay by their sides through all this. And also, another thing is because it was I um, it makes sense now too. It's for him. He doesn't have his memories in this dimension. In the other dimension, they never lost their memories. So he always maintained them. So he was, you know, when it was time to go back to his people, he had his memories and he could, like, truthful, like, truthfully lead his people uh, down the right path. And he's like, as he is now without all his memories, what good is he to his people in this time of war when, you know, but he wants to be there for him, but he feels like he'd be useless. I mean, it's kind of interesting because basically his brother is making, or his half brother is making all the wrong moves. He's like, "Oh yeah, this was a setback, but we're gonna come back stronger, like fix the situation." But a lot of people kind of see it as like, "No, you don't know what you're doing." Like, it makes you wonder how does the queen feel, knowing that she pushed so hard for her son to have power to put him in this position, and now your people are at war and they're losing it. And you know, basically, you fall all this way for nothing. You kill your husband you framed your uh other well not your half son stepson i should it's the proper word framed him for it just for the purpose of getting your son on the throne so that you could have more power so what will all that power mean to you when basically uh your people fall i mean not unless she strikes a deal with the enemy that they're at war with and is trying to uh, gain even more power or uh, you know maybe she's just doing the typical evil person thing it's like oh i'll always switch my allegiances and loyalties as long as i'm always on the winning side you know because i was actually surprised ford didn't just go off on his own this episode because it did seem like that might be where it was leading to but the fact of the matter is because i almost keep I, I didn't even think about it once this entire episode until they brought it up it's like oh yeah we have that drive that allows us to basically instant transmission anywhere and so i get the feeling like that's going to come up soon where it's like oh four is going to use that to just go back home or something i don't know like he's still like i said that whole like no memory thing is still holding him back it's kind of which is kind of like very interesting uh, like it that was never something that really clicked in my brain as to what would keep him back because in the other dimension he did have his memories because he never lost them so i thought this was very interesting and then finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about was like the, what we saw at the end of the episode where basically we saw the android kind of waking up somewhere else because basically she was going off to kind of charge herself. So I'm going to interpret that like I heard literally like a, a sentence from the next week's episode. I'm going to guess that maybe what that was is that basically somehow the android got infected with a virus and basically it's kind of a situation where it's like oh she's waking up thinking she's human but like it's kind of like oh now she doesn't know what's 
real and what's fake. It's like, oh, was everything as me and as an android fake? And this is reality here in me as a human, or is me being a human here fake, but me as an android was real? And it's like, oh, like, you know, kind of like having to choose between, like, what you want most and what's real, you know, because it's like being a human and just, accept, you know, seems, you know, it'd probably be, it's what she's always dreamed about. So, like, having that be the reality sounds a lot more, much better. I feel like, it, it, like I can say, I, I can be completely wrong once we get to the next episode. But it'd be kind of interesting if it was an episode where it's like, oh, she's human. And that basically she's thinking, like, she was dreaming the entire thing. Because you end up seeing, like, everyone from the crew ranging from uh, two, two, three, four, five, and six are all there. But they're just, like, different people that she's come across in her life. Some people that she may know or she may not know. Like, there's been, been instances of stuff like this in other TV shows. But I just kind of wanted to use it. Like, I think that would be a great example of, to see that happening. Like I said, I could be completely wrong about it. But that's just something i kind of throwing out there. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to talk uh, talk about. Uh, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.